In recent global events, there's been a significant message about strategic commitments and international relationships. The Middle East tensions highlighted that ironclad commitments and alliances, like the one between the United States and its partners, don't guarantee complete safety from threats. We will support Israel, we will defend, help defend Israel, and Iran will not succeed. Now, attention has shifted to the South China Sea, where the Philippines and China are at odds. The Philippines has been reminded of the importance of protecting its own interests, especially its security and sovereignty. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. stressed the need for decisions to always prioritize what's best for the nation, especially in such critical matters. This shows how important it is for the Philippines to carefully navigate its position in the complex Indo-Pacific region. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., who assumed office in 2022, firmly stated recently that the Philippines has no intentions of granting the United States access to additional military bases beyond the current agreements. This stance comes after Marcos allowed American forces to utilize four more Philippine military bases, adding to the existing five sites where U.S. troops can rotate indefinitely under a 2014 pact. The decision to expand U.S. presence in the Philippines was motivated by China's assertive actions in the disputed South China Sea, aiming to bolster regional security in response to rising tensions. Marcos's authorization of additional U.S. military access triggered concerns from China, particularly due to the strategic locations of two newly designated bases near Taiwan and southern China. Beijing accused the Philippines of providing American forces with staging grounds that could undermine China's security interests. Marcos addressed these concerns, emphasizing that the presence of U.S. troops in the Philippines is a reaction to China's aggressive behavior in the South China Sea, citing instances of Chinese Coast Guard vessels using water cannons and lasers against Philippine ships in disputed waters. Despite escalating tensions with China, Marcos highlighted the importance of media exposure in documenting Chinese actions that threaten regional stability. Under his leadership, the Philippines has taken steps to publicize incidents by allowing journalists to accompany patrol ships to witness China's assertive actions firsthand. In this specific context, all of the South China Sea, our interests are clear. They lie in ensuring that the universal and unified character of the 1982 United Nations Convention of the Law of the Sea, or UNCLOS, and in the final and binding determinations of the South China Sea Arbitration Award of 2016 are firmly and consistently upheld. In recent year, the United States and the Philippines finalized agreement to expand American military presence in the Southeast Asian nation, marking a significant development in strengthening their alliance during escalating regional tensions. This decision was announced during U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin's visit to Manila, and it highlighted Biden administration's efforts to increase military alliances across the Indo-Pacific region, particularly in response to China's growing military capabilities and assertive actions including its claims over Taiwan and the South China Sea. The agreement granted U.S. forces access to four additional military camps in the Philippines, enabling broader cooperation and positioning of American and allied forces, while emphasizing that this move does not entail the re-establishment of permanent American bases. Secretary Austin described the agreement as a big deal in enhancing regional security partnerships. He emphasized the importance of the 1951 Mutual Defense Treaty, affirming U.S. military support to defend the Philippines against armed attacks, especially in the South China Sea amid China's advancing illegitimate claims. We note that the Mutual Defense Treaty applies to armed attacks on either of our armed forces, public vessels, or aircraft anywhere in the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea. We discussed concrete actions to address destabilizing activities in the waters surrounding the Philippines, including the West Philippine Sea. And we remain committed to strengthening our mutual capacities to resist armed attack. That's just part of our efforts to modernize our alliance. And these efforts are especially important as the People's Republic of China continues to advance its illegitimate claims in the West Philippine Sea. 
The expanded U.S. military presence in the Philippines has drawn scrutiny from China. Despite objections from Beijing, the agreement reflects a broader strategic shift in U.S. foreign policy to counter China's influence and secure long-standing alliances in the Indo-Pacific. Despite objections from Beijing and domestic protests, the enhanced alliance between the U.S. and the Philippines signals a united front against regional challenges, including maritime disputes and territorial assertiveness in the South China Sea. Chinese diplomats voiced strong opposition to the United States' military presence in the Philippines during closed-door talks with Filipino counterparts in Manila, highlighting the deepening rivalry between the U.S. and China in the region. According to a Filipino official who attended the meeting, China expressed intense objections to the decision to allow increased American military activity, particularly in a northern region facing the Taiwan Strait. The Filipino diplomats responded by stating that the expanded U.S. presence was in their national interest, enhancing the Philippines' capability to respond to natural disasters and not directed at China. However, the Marcos administration announced its decision to allow rotating batches of American forces to indefinitely station in four additional Philippine military camps, supplementing existing arrangements under a 2014 defense pact. This move highlighted the Philippines' strategic repositioning. Despite China's objections, the Philippines emphasized its commitment to enhancing national defense capabilities and addressing security concerns. China rebuked the Philippines for allegedly provoking tensions in the South China Sea, issuing a policy paper asserting its sovereignty over the disputed islands just a day after an international tribunal dismissed China's legal basis for its expansive claims. Vice Foreign Minister Liu Zhenmin, introducing the paper, accused the Philippines of creating and exacerbating the conflict by seeking arbitration from the tribunal in The Hague. The ruling, which found China's actions in violation of maritime rights and contributing to regional instability, has uncertain enforceability but carries significant international weight. Despite China's objections, the Philippines reiterated its commitment to peaceful negotiations and welcomed the ruling as a milestone decision contributing to efforts to address disputes in the South China Sea. Philippine Foreign Secretary Perfecto Yase emphasized the importance of restraint and sobriety from all parties involved calling for the acceptance of the tribunal's findings to facilitate peaceful resolution. The Philippines strongly affirms its respect for this milestone decision as an important contribution to ongoing efforts in addressing disputes in the South China Sea. The ruling was seen as a victory for small Asian nations against China's expansionism and prompted calls for compliance from global leaders, including Australian Foreign Minister Julie Bishop and the then Japan's Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida. The tribunal's decision, while lacking enforcement power, represented a significant challenge to China's territorial claims and pinpointed the importance of international law in resolving disputes. China, which boycotted the proceedings, declared the ruling null and void maintaining its stance that bilateral negotiations are the only acceptable means of addressing the issue. The aftermath of the ruling was shaped by the approach of Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte, who expressed willingness to engage with China, but faced domestic pressure to uphold national sovereignty in the face of Beijing's assertiveness in the region. Now the president of the U.S., Joe Biden stressed the commitment of the United States to its Pacific allies, particularly the Philippines and Japan, amidst escalating tensions with China in the Indo-Pacific region. Biden reiterated the ironclad nature of the U.S. defense commitments during a recent trilateral meeting at the White House with Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. And I want to be clear, the United States, the United States defense commitments to Japan and to the Philippines are ironclad. They're ironclad. As I said before, any attack on Philippine aircraft, vessels, or armed forces in the South China Sea would invoke our mutual defense treaty. 
This affirmation comes amid ongoing confrontations between Philippine and Chinese Coast Guard vessels in the disputed South China Sea. The meeting aimed to address China's provocative actions in the region, including what has been described as gray zone harassment tactics. These tactics include incidents such as shining military-grade lasers at Philippine Coast Guard vessels and disrupting Philippine ships near the Second Thomas Shoal, which both the Philippines and China claim. Biden's recent phone call with Chinese President Xi Jinping highlighted concerns over China's activities in the South China Sea, particularly its attempts to obstruct Philippine resupply efforts at the Second Thomas Shoal. The White House hosted the first-ever trilateral summit with Japan and the Philippines. During the meeting, Biden and Marcos reaffirmed their commitment to international law in the South China Sea and announced joint patrols in the Indo-Pacific region. Additionally, the leaders unveiled plans for a new economic corridor in the Philippines to foster development in areas such as clean energy, port infrastructure, and agriculture. The summit signals the Biden administration's determination to strengthen alliances in the Indo-Pacific amid regional challenges and global crises. The gathering also underscores the Biden administration's efforts to improve relations with the Philippines since Marcos assumed the presidency in June 2022. Despite initial indications of pursuing closer ties with China, Marcos has increasingly aligned with Washington due to concerns about China's assertive behavior. The evolving security landscape in the Indo-Pacific highlights the strategic responses of nations like the Philippines to China's assertive actions in the South China Sea. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s firm stance on U.S. military base access reflects a concerted effort to address regional tensions while balancing geopolitical interests. President Joe Biden's reaffirmation of U.S. support for its Pacific allies, demonstrated through recent trilateral engagements with the Philippines and Japan, highlights a commitment to regional stability. By focusing on joint patrols and economic development initiatives, these efforts aim to strengthen alliances and promote adherence to international norms amidst evolving security dynamics in the region. 